but meh. Um, well, speaking of some of the worst movies ever made, <laughs> uh, this week I watched a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I, oh boy, okay. I went to the theaters to see The Choice. Uh, this is a brand new movie just landed in theaters. Right now it's getting 28 on Metascore. Um, this is a this is the 11th adaptation of a Nicholas Sparks film. How, m- <laughs> um, How many books does he have? Uh, about a million, I feel like. Uh, well, no, sorry. He has one book that he has photocopied times. many yeah, times. Only one with a ghost, though. Yeah. Uh, this movie, according to... That you know of. Fair enough. Yeah. The, the Maybe IMD, there's many. IMD, all, all of the other ones have ghosts. Yeah. Maybe in the other ones, the ghost was such a subtle subtext. Yeah. That you, <laughs> you didn't even get it. IMDb describes the synopsis of this film as Travis and Gabby first meet as neighbors in a small coastal town and wind up in a relationship that is tested by life's most defining events. Um, what? What? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, could you read that again? I fell asleep halfway through. Travis and Gabby meet as neighbors in a small coastal town and wind up in a relationship that is tested by life's most defining events. Uh, 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 wait. So, uh, what was the Miley Cyrus one that I watched? Uh, I don't know. That sounds like what we're, what we're talking yeah. about. So, Travis and Gabby, played by Benjamin Walker and Teresa Palmer. Benjamin, I don't know who either of them are. Benjamin Walker... <laughs> uh, most recently was in the in the heart of the sea, the Ron Howard movie. He was also in Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Uh-huh. Uh, and Who, uh I believe he was Abraham Lincoln, mm, I th- or, or, right. or or at least he was in it. I don't know. But Teresa Palmer, <laughs> uh, she was in Warm Bodies. <laughs> right, well. She was in I Am Number Four, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, a bunch of uh, uh, kind of teen garbage. Teen yeah, okay. garbage. Great. Um, and who else is in this movie? I'm trying to think. If there's Tom a, Wilkinson. Tom Wilkinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. And so okay. Uh, Holy shit. <laughs> okay, this movie's fucking garbage, obviously. <laughs> How many um, Nicholas I've Sparks seen movies have so you seen? So many, I feel like. The Lucky <laughs> One with Zac Efron. Um, I don't even remember that. I'm, I believe The Longest Ride was was him as well. With That's the, the one yeah. with Clint Eastwood Jr.? S- yeah, right. riding horses and shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you saw Safe Haven. Safe yeah. Haven. Yeah, well, you I've saw s- that too. Yeah. How, what did I've, you saw one, Casey? Right? Yeah. Just the, I've seen two. You seen yeah. two? I saw. Um, oh, you saw the uh, Miley the, Cyrus the turkey the one sea. or whatever chicken one. That and was LOL. That wasn't Miley Cyrus. <laughs> no, that was that wasn't Nick no, Nicholas. No, no, oh. no, Nicholas. No, the other one I saw was. Uh, oh, right. I think it was you called the it. Best of Me. Yeah, the right, Best okay. of Me. Yeah. I've never seen one. Well, I mean, I've seen the Notebook. Yeah. Uh, Which is like his, volition? like uh, it's like his movie that is the only one that I feel like anyone has ever said was. I feel like that's the only one I've ever heard anyone defend. Yeah, the Notebook. Yeah, yeah, sure, and I get it. Yeah, it, and 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 it's and I I think it's defendable, but only in its star power. It's a movie that yeah. landed because of the stars. Yes, <clears throat> I didn't see it. Yeah, uh, like it, it is. No, it's, it's, I'm, I would never be like, oh, oh, you haven't seen it. You should see that. No, <laughs> uh, never. But, but, I, uh, but having seen many of his movies, I, I would be like, if I've you, seen if worse, you need to watch romantic if you movies. Want, if you want to force yourself to watch one, yeah, that's the only that's one that's like directed with any kind of intent yeah. and acted yeah. with any kind yeah. of intent. Even though yeah, it's a good yeah, it's still super manipulative in the way that he what is. We got yeah, James Garner. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, who's the old lady? I don't know. James Garner is the yeah, old lady. Yeah. James Garner plays everyone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. So yeah. I do want to say Benjamin Walker as Travis in this movie. Yeah. He's the love interest. Uh-huh. You could... Fall in it, love. You could fall in <laughs> love with this man. <laughs> and boy, by golly, I did. Yeah. <laughs> you could so easily switch yeah. out a couple music stings and this would be a horror movie. This, oh, because he's like creepy. <laughs> this guy in this movie is such a creepy bully, and I'll get to that. But yeah. like his performance is just like he's like a good old southern boy. But he's so like he's a good old southern boy who's a ladies' man. But he's like forceful and so like and like I'm the whole movie. I'm thinking like you're obsessed and a couple like horror mu- movie strings in this in this, and it's like a horror film. Like you could. You would not have to change some of these scenes yeah. very much to edit a, this movie as a horror movie. Um, so the gist of the movie is Travis uh, Benjamin Walker. He's like a good old boy um, in this the, in the town of Beaufort. And Gabby, she's like the uptight neighbor who moves next door. And she doesn't like that he's got all his friends outside and they're partying and having a dinner and like drinking 
drinks and cranking the tunes, and she's like, I got to study. Ah, uh-huh. stop cranking Black Betty over there. Black Betty. <laughs> <laughs> what year is this movie set in? Now, or like seven years ago or something uh-huh. um, oh, at the beginning of it. And so she's moved, just moved to town. She's studying. She's a medical student. She's got like rich parents, and he's uh, he works at like a vet's office with his pa. Wait, this movie set seven years ago. It, it's a movie that opens where he's like, <laughs> "Have oh, you you never you really haven't seen? No, uh, you really uh, have uh, Nicholas Barr's <laughs> movie. <laughs> it's a movie. They all start seven years yeah, ago. It's a movie <laughs> or twenty-seven oh. years ago or seventeen yeah. years ago. <laughs> all right, all right. It's a movie that opens with him like narrating these like. Oh, I got to make a real hard choice right now, <laughs> but I'll tell you that later, seven years ago when I met this woman kind of thing. Yeah. And then they start the story there. Either way, here, yeah. enjoy Black Betty for seven yeah. years. So I am a lamb. <laughs> you remember seven years ago when we were all listening to Black Betty. Yeah. So he... So um, fresh. Yeah. <laughs> ah, ram a lamb indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he is this like good old boy. He's got a boat and he lives like on the uh, on the water and, and he's got all these friends that come over all the time. His dad um, uh, is played by Tom Wilkinson and his mother is uh, someone who had passed away years ago. And he's also got... Uh, <laughs> The character or the actress? <laughs> His mom in the movie. Yeah. There's no actress. Okay. It's uh, okay. just a character. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, and uh, this guy, Travis, he's like got this on again, off again, kind of like girlfriend that all his friends call Boomerang because she keeps leaving and coming back. Oh. Clever. Yeah. Is she, so, a, is she Australian? I don't know. <laughs> So the gist of the movie is uh, he lives there with his like friends, and he's kind of like, yeah, doesn't commit, has an on and a, on on and off again girlfriend, whatever, and she moves next door, and man, they hate each other, but I have a feeling that they're probably going to fall in love. So eventually she comes out and is like, you turn down your music. Ah, Black Betty, I hate that song. You turn down your music, or so help me God, I'll fall in love yeah. with you. And she's also like, your dog impregnated my dog. <laughs> you, got, you got your chocolate in my penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things just got sexy. Yeah, and he keeps saying, like, lady, you bother me. Uh-huh. <laughs> I do dec- I say He's I like, do dec- lady. <laughs> and then and they eventually twist that into, like, a... Like a romantic thing. Oh, like, lady, you boner. Does that turn into like a ditto for them kind of thing? Sort of. Not really. Yeah. He just keeps saying like, I'll tell you later. <laughs> when the inevitable sparks you uh, bother trauma penis. happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's kind of... Um, you penis me. <laughs> so yeah, he's kind of got a girlfriend <laughs> and uh, she is sort of... She's dating this um, this this doctor who works in the same um, medical uh, profession as her, the, somewhere in the hospital. They don't, I don't really remember any of this garbage. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, he goes away for like two weeks, and so they end up spending time together and falling in love. And oh. they finally, like, she's... It, she seems not interested very often. And this is the first when they finally start like kissing, and and eventually when they finally have when sex, they finally start kissing. Well, it, 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 honestly, that. all that stuff that I just, all <laughs> that <laughs> stuff that I just described was like an hour of the fucking movie. Right. This is a two-hour movie. Start kissing, you were like, like. get to the romance. <laughs> it's garbage. Uh, Your dogs are already <laughs> fucking. Yeah. Um, when they finally, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Well, I wish I'd yelled that out. When they finally get to like the romance, she, I feel like she's still really like, no, I have a boyfriend. This shouldn't happen. And he's just like, I'm going to make out with you anyway. You bother me. And like, it's kind of creepy. And the scene, there's two scenes in this movie. One where, um, where they first kiss and then eventually have sex. And then another later when, spoiler alert, they get married, where he's like kind of bullying her. And like, she's like, no. Say I do. Do it. Uh, Do it. That is not <laughs> far from the truth. <laughs> wow. Um, but but they like have this sex and it's like it seems like it's so forceful on his end and I was like this is not cool. This is gross. And the whole movie is like that. I'm just I don't understand this. Like, it's not like oh she can't resist his charms. I'm like she's trying to. She's saying no. I don't <laughs> like you a lot. Um, but they do also have a lot of stuff where they're whatever falling in love and then because this is a Nicholas Sparks movie. This this is a movie that spins its wheels doing its dumb shit with the romance for like an hour and a half yeah. and then gives these characters their 
their happy ending. So uh, the the doctor comes back to town after they've fallen in love and banged, and and she doesn't know what to do because she doesn't know if she should pick the guy that she's already been with or this new hot flame that could just be like a a side thing. And and he gets real mad about it and runs away, and they have their whole like argument. And so she runs home. Uh, to her parents' place, and then he shows up, and this is where Casey, what you were just saying, he's like, "I'm here to like, I'm laying it on the line. I want you to marry me." And he like gets down on one knee, and his, her parents are like, "Go for it, man! Here's a ring," and they're like <laughs> really like pushing him and and pushing their daughter, who see, is saying, "No, don't do this," into this situation. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> we've but always wanted you to marry a there, scumbag. There is so much like people in this movie forcing relationships on other people. There's a whole thing with uh, the main character's dad, who like is a vet, and this woman keeps coming in with her cat, and they're like, "She's just coming in because she has a crush on you. You better ask her out." The and cat, like, no, like the woman <laughs> with the cat. And then I'm like, maybe they don't like to f- chill. <laughs> but anyway, so he comes and shows up and is like. Gets down on one knee with the ring that the parents gave uh, gave him, and he's like, "Will you marry me?" And she goes, "No," and then he's like, "Yes," and she's like, "No," and he's like, "Yes," and she's like, "Yes." Like it goes back wow. and forth with him just yelling no at her, and I was like, or him him yelling yes at her, and her being like, "No, I don't want to marry you," and I was like, "He's bullying her into a marriage," and they cut from there to like a happy marriage. Woo. You saw this in theaters? Yes. Yeah. Did you go by yourself? Yes. Oh man. Uh-huh. Uh, how many people <laughs> were in the theater? And then uh, how many people? Yeah. Not a ton, but there was a, a, a uh, yeah, there was a mm-hmm. sprinkling of Fair people enough. there. Enjoying Any, themselves? Yeah. Well, they were like, yes, They dude. were. Somebody yes, uh, on yes. the way out, somebody was like, my mascara is running because I've been crying. And I was like, there's nothing. You're an idiot. Yeah. So <laughs> so this movie gives these characters a happy ending. They Now we fast forward. They've got kids. They've been married for a few years. And then out of nowhere, because it's a Nicholas Sparks movie, she gets hit by a car when she's driving around and goes yes. into a coma. Yeah. And it's about time. And it becomes that the titular choice is whether he needs to pull the plug on her oh, or not. Oh, wonderful. Please tell me he does. And he doesn't. And here's I the kicker. I live. No. He, yeah. <laughs> yes. No. He doesn't because uh, there is a Christian uh, layer in this movie where yeah. uh, she likes going to church and he won't go to church, but his dad is like a pastor. And so eventually they get caught in the rain. And the only thing nearby is a church. And it happens to be the church that his dad's a pastor at. And they go there. And then he's like, oh, you got my son to go to a church. You're a keeper. Uh, and then anyway, he's like, at the end of the movie, he just can't he can't pull the plug on her. So he 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 says he was one day. He's like, this is the day I'm going to do it. And he can't. And then like the next day she wakes up. And he's like, glad I didn't do oh, that. Good thing I didn't. Good thing I didn't. Kill and you. I read the, the wicked- fun, <laughs> funny story. I was yeah, this I was going to, to yesterday. Mm. And the, and I read the. I sold all your shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> I pronounced you legally. <laughs> yeah. Um. And and I read the the synopsis of the book on Wikipedia, and the book seems to be like between her going into the coma and like like it time passes in the movie and the kids start to get older, but in the in the movie it's like in the book it says like oh he decides to put her in like intensive care and like yeah. years go by before she comes back and in the movie it yeah. seems like once he decides not to she just miraculously comes to yeah. and then they uh spend the rest of their lives together and it's really stupid isn't that nice yeah and it's it's fucking disgusting and i feel like there is a weird <laughs> like there there really is a weird undercurrent of her like I, I get that it's supposed to be like, oh, I feel the passion, but I don't want to, and I'm, I got this back and forth, but it just yeah, yeah. it came off so like, I'm saying no to you marrying me, and you're just yelling yes at me. Like he's so gross, and the bother me thing keeps coming back. Where when she's in the coma, he's like, come bother me, come back and bother <laughs> it me. It bothers me how dead you yeah. are. <laughs> yeah, it's just gross and manipulative as always yeah, and i feel uh, like the, the last chunk of the movie just becomes like offensive yeah like it's just awful and it's not sad at all and it, and just having rewatched something like me or me and her on the dying girl where i was like super sad yeah i was like there's nothing to this movie yeah like not you nothing happened and then you just murdered like half murdered one of your characters and assumed that that's enough for somebody to be like sad now I don't because know. this character that you didn't set up properly got hit in a car accident and it's just like there's it's not the fucking movie 19 minutes in heaven or whatever the fuck that was that i watched mm-hmm. had more 
like I don't know. I I get a different uh, undercurrent from you. I think you loved this movie. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You fell in love with that. He you love this movie. Her into a marriage. It's fucking. Crazy. Marry this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Guess it. Okay. Yeah, it's fucked. <laughs> this movie got your dog pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> It's insane. And yeah, and and the forcefulness of everybody in this movie that aren't the main characters getting other people into relationships. The whole movie I was just like, fucking mind your own business. But you can feel the ways that it's that his movies are manipulative. Like it it creates this little feeling of community amongst yeah. family and friends and stuff like that that uh I, I'm not going to pinpoint, you know, the middle states of America specifically yeah. because there's parts of Canada that, that are very much like, mm-hmm. but like this real down home kind of yeah. uh, uh, like church going people, they, they eat shit like that up. There doesn't have to be character yeah. development and the less character development, the better because they get to identify with these people yeah. because they go to church and they have friends who have yeah. barbecues and stuff like that. So it just pisses me off because like, <laughs> The this less movie, character development, the better, because they can insert themselves directly yeah, into yeah. it. But these movies are selling, you know, it's the argument, like, this doesn't exist. Like, the the kind of relationship in this movie that is so, like, burns bright for all of eternity, and, like, and the friendships that are so perfect, we're all listening to music on our on our patio, and, like, everything is just perfect, and we're on our fucking boat driving around, like, nobody... Has that like it's one of no, the? I just, it, movie, it upsets me that this movie is even to the people that like it, and it's fine that those people like it, but it's like selling this like hollow, offensive lie. But that's why this to movie people exists. that don't need to be sold a lie. <laughs> but they've been sold this lie their whole lives, yeah. And so they've been searching for this type of thing their whole lives. So when they see it on screen, they go, "Yes, that's what I taught. That, yeah. That's what I've been looking for." Yeah. And so they're constantly chasing the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> that sparks. It, it is, I'm not saying it's not mani- manipulative and gross. No, it, I know. It, that's why it is. Totally. It's this insidious, um, like, idealism that uh, yeah. that ruins real relationships for people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's but just that's why, garbage. But that's why people fucking put their money down and see yeah. it. Yep. And the people Plus, that... this movie probably cost, not yeah, a lot, you know, yeah, like a couple $12 million. million dollars to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the people that liked in the theater, like you said when you saw your Nichols Sparks movie, like they walked away with what they wanted. So yeah. Yeah. fine, but yeah, it would piss me off. It was so bad, so bad. Dumb as fuck. Wonderful. <clears throat> presentation of the Modern Superior Media Network.